So let's do a stem cell 101 so folks understand why folks are excited about stem cells. I mean, you are one of the original pioneers in this area, and I want to get into that. But what are stem cells? Why are they important? What's cellular medicine? So what I've often said is that just like you renovate your home to keep it in perfect operating condition, it's best to renovate with the original materials that were used to build it at the, at the first in the first place. And it's one of the reasons why good contractors will often leave you a supply of tiles and countertops and plumbing supplies and so on, so that as you're going through the process of repairing over the years, you're repairing it back to perfect condition. Nature does that for you by keeping a little supply of stem cells in every organ and tissue of your body. And those stem cells get called upon to do the repair process. It's, mm. for the, it's the natural repair kit. Now, over time, you exhaust that supply. And we often think of the aging process, one of the hallmarks of aging, being that you simply use up your stem cell reservoir. And it kind of makes sense, right? Just like you would use up the tiles that are left over for renovating your, your bathroom, you can use up the stem cells as well. Now, it's important to keep in mind that what makes a stem cell so valuable and useful is its ability to specialize in a versatile way, meaning that it doesn't necessarily have to be fate directed. So stem cells in your liver have the ability to become hepatocytes, actual liver metabolizing cells, but they can also become biliary tract cells. They can also become blood vessel cells. They can also become cells that are, that are support cells. And so that they choose their fate based upon demand. Yes. Um, and that's really critical. We actually know now that a lot of that choice, a lot of that fate choice occurs um, directed by where the cell is. And so we, we know that every, every tissue in our body is a combination of a structure, a template occupied by cells. That template provides chemical signals that tells the cell where it is. I often say it's like you walk into the mall and you look at the map and it says you are here and now you mm. know how to go find, you know, Abercrombie and Fitch or whatnot. The truth of the matter is the same thing happens in the body and in our tissues. The different cells, the different stem cells on the tissue know where they are and they specialize in an appropriate way. That's why if I give you, if I inject stem cells into your bloodstream and they get to the liver, but they don't yet become liver cells, they don't eventually make a mistake and become a brain cell. Mm. That's that, that specialized maturation process is very much orchestrated by the environment. So I think one thing that's important uh, to discuss here is what happens as you age to your stem cells, and I would call you know stem cell exhaustion. And again, this is research that you've done um, and you brought to the uh, industry here is uh, how many stem cells you begin with as a newborn and where do you end up at the end of life? And it's like another version of your mansion story is imagine you built a giant mansion. I've heard you present this. And um, in the beginning, uh, your mansion has a whole bunch of repairmen and it has uh, perfect instructions. And as the repairmen are keeping things going, following the instructions, the mansion stays in great shape, but eventually the repairmen or women start to die off and the population of people being able to repair the mansion begins to um, uh, degrade and eventually fall away. And the instruction set begins to blur and tatter. Um, your ability to keep the mansion in good structural health uh, disappears. Um, and you're getting yeah. that as well with stem cells. So talk to us about the, uh, the change in populations. So um, every stem cell has the, I always say, every stem cell retains the fully transcribable genome. What that means is we know that our biological software is, uh, is in our DNA and our genetic material. And that software is used to make all of the necessary chemicals and proteins and, and, and signaling molecules that drive the functionality of every cell in our body. And those functions differ based upon the organ or tissue. Liver cells have part of their genome dedicated to liver functions. And in the process of becoming a liver cell, 
part of the genetic material gets silenced so that it's very efficient in what it does. The stem cell, in contrast, retains all that versatility, the ability to read the whole genome. You, you know that when we were when we first built, started to build our interest in this field, we created a company called Human Longevity. And Human Longevity was dedicated to reading, interrogating the genome of long-lived people to better understand what might be a hallmark of long life. Well, if you remember, um, our, our, our former partner, uh, Craig Venter, the first scientist to sequence the human genome, always spoke about DNA as biological software. And I always spoke of stem cells as the mini computer yeah. that, that the software resided in the nucleus. And all of the, all of the reading and writing of that software took place in the cell, the cytoplasm of the cell, and the surface of the cell acted like a keyboard. And so if you think of it in that model, then what a stem cell is that is so valuable to us is it's like a perfect, uncorrupted reboot disk, master boot disk, that as long as you keep it in good condition, anytime your software gets damaged, and your software gets damaged by mutation, it gets damaged by exhaustion, it gets damaged by chemical uh, adulterants, anytime that happens, if you can reinstall the software with yep. this master boot disk, you can get back to a state of, of high health, high functionality. By the way, anybody under 35 may not know what a boot disk is, but it was what what you would what you used to get with your computer that would boot up the computer um and uh install the install, uh, in, yeah. yeah in the initialization of your of your disk drive. Anyway, but the analogy still still holds. So one of the things you mentioned to me is like between birth and death, um you get something like a hundred to a thousand fold reduction in the number of stem cells in each of the tissues of your body. Is that, is that true? We know that a hallmark of youth is a very abundant, to use a term that's important, an, an abundant, healthy supply of stem cells. So if you look at one organ system, let's look at bone marrow, okay? And people okay. know bone marrow makes makes the Blood, the blood cells, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the platelets, bone marrow is filled with stem cells that do all that. Mm -hmm. At the top, early in life, early after birth, if you were to measure the number of stem cells in the bone marrow of a, of a eight week old, about one in 20 to 30,000 cells in the bone marrow of a, of a newborn is a stem cell. Over your lifetime, that number declines, it de declines exponentially. So if you look at the bone marrow of an 80-year-old, it's one in 20 to 30 million cells. Uh -huh. A thousand-fold reduction. thousand-fold reduction. Now, it should be obvious to everybody that the more stem cells you have, the more you're able to respond to the need for repair and renovation. And as you get older, if it's harder to find, it, harder to find a stem cell to do that work, you're not going to repair back to the same state of function and health. So yeah. think about it as you're using up your your toolkit supplies. Mm 